Okay, I'm going to show you how to make this tag-shaped art journal using the Coptic Stitch with my digital printable covers. Um, I'm going to use the vintage uh, cover this time, but of course there's the purple and there's also the green that you could do this with. So I just kind of wanted to point that out really quick. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to cut, they come out, they come with the uh, templates. This is the cover templates. So you can either, you can do two things. You can cut these out and trace it onto your chipboard or you can measure it and then do your chipboard that way. Um, either way. But I'm going to just, I'm going to cut them out and then I'm going to trace them just to show you how easy that is. So I'm going to do that first. I am going to get my paper trimmer out. My big mambo jumbo. This is a, um, a Friskers rotary. It's really big. That's why it's crooked. I have to, uh, I don't have that much space underneath my camera here. So let's see. So I just want to trim it out. Okay. Then I'm just going to trim these corners. Whoa. One of the things you'll notice on this piece is that it has some dots on it. That's where you're going to poke your hose uh, to do the binding. Um, it's on the front and back, so if you need it, you know, both. Um, what else? I might as well go ahead and cut out the, the covers, too. Also, I'm going to cut out this page template. I'm going to show you some other stuff you can do with this too. So I'm going to go ahead and before I do that though, I'm going to score it down that center line. And then I'm going to trim it out this way. That way I know that it's even on all, um, all the way around. It's the same dimension. That just makes it a lot easier. And if it's not 100% perfect, just flip it over and trim it that way. And since I've still got my, my trimmer out, I'm going to go ahead and cut the liner pages. You can also always use um, the covers. You can make two copies and use the covers as the liners too. You can even use this page template as a liner, which is cool. Or you can use one of the background pages that you get with the with the printable. Um, I think I'm just going to use the background page. Um, let's see. So let's, let's measure. The pages are going to be the same size as the liner. Yeah. So let's let's um, let's measure the cover. So it's four and a half by. Let's see. This is. Four and a half by six and seven eighths. Now, depending on your printer, it'll depend on what exact size this prints out. But if you just fit to page, it should print out super close to this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to uh, six and seven eighths height, like this. So I've got a piece of this left over, and then I'm going to cut the two liner pieces, which would be four and a half. So I'm going to cut two four and a half pieces. Oop! <laughs> My paper curled up because of the leg of the uh, tripod is right there. Oh well, just add to it. And then another four and a half. All right, that, now I think I can move this out of the way. Let me move this. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use, um, I'm just going to use the cover template. I'm going to lay it right on top of those pages, just like that. And I'm just going to trim the corners off. That way, there's no measuring for the corners. You just 
line it up and voila. So now we've got the two liner pieces. We've got the back cover and the front cover. And we've got all of our templates cut out. Um, I did want to go ahead, before I forget, I want to go ahead and I have a casualty uh, here. <laughs> this hole, it fits a standard office hole punch, but I have done something to mine and I broke it and I can't get it to punch anymore. Let me see if I can get it to work today. It's like it's not lined up or some, something's just not... Well, anyway, so this is supposed to, <laughs> this fits this hole, so you, all you need is a standard office punch. But for now, I guess I'll just use my, my We Are Memory Keepers uh, crop and I'll just use the big hole, even though it's not big enough, I'll just use it like so. I'm going to go ahead and poke the hoe in the pages one too, and I'm going to use that as a template as well. It should match up just fine to the back if you fold, if you scored it and folded it in half and cut it out. So just line them up together and then punch all through all four of them, or the rest of them, I guess. So now they're all got the same the same hoe. Now since the, there wasn't a, uh, an actual printable for the liners. I am going to add some pre-inked hoe reinforcers or mints. <laughs> yeah, I swear. Well, you know what? I'm gonna look now. All right this second, they are called reinforcements, hoe reinforcements. So, and I'm also gonna go ahead and ink my edges. Now, I know y'all aren't going to believe it, but look, I got a new one. It's archival. It's coffee. Um, coffee flavored. <laughs> coffee colored. This is what I use a lot. So, I'm going to go ahead and ink the, and I even got a new sponge. I'm going to go ahead and ink all of the edges on this. On this. So, I've got all these together. I'm going to put these aside for this, for this moment. And then I'm going to get my piece of chipboard. It's just, I'm using the back side of a, I think it was a watercolor pad. Um, it really doesn't matter, actually. What it, what you, you could use chipboard. It's your journal. You can use whatever you have on hand. So, the idea behind the templates is to just lay it on the chip. Let me get a pencil. Just to lay it on the the. The, um, chipboard, maybe line up two edges if you've got two, and then just trace around. And you could too put these side by side like this and have just traced around the whole thing. But I'm just gonna, no, you know, what? I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Why not? I've cut it out, I've got it, and it should line up just perfectly. There's also, there, the steps are there. Print template out onto cardstock, cut it out, <laughs> trace out on a desired cover material, you know, yada yada. All right, so if you want to, you can take a really sharp pair of scissors and trim this out, but I don't want to. I want to use something sharper. I'm going to use my, my heavy, I have um, a heavy duty thing there, what's this called, yep, it's called something, a uh, box cutter, I don't know, but I've noticed that I've been wearing out in my craft knives. Um, I have two. I have the Martha Stewart one and also have the Prima one. I wear these blades out cutting through this chipboard a lot. So, my hubby told me I needed to be really careful with these when I use them. 
So I'm going to cut this top line out of both of them at the same time. And a trick too is to make several passes instead of putting all your might into one pass. It cuts better and smoother. Like a bot. Now for the corners, you can just use your scissors. It doesn't have to be a long straight cut like the other pieces. You all have seen me do this, this part before, but I'm going to show you again. Just take some Distress Stain or you could paint this white. You could paint it any color you want to. You could, um, you could cut some pieces out of that background paper that fit completely onto the cover and you can cover the whole thing. You could, you could do it any way you want to. It's your art journal or journal, so you do whatever you want. But this is how I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how I made this one. Exactly how I did the covers and everything. So I'm gonna take some Distress Stain, which is vintage photo. That is also my favorite Distress Stain color. And I'm just gonna go around the edges. After I get done with this, I'm going to show you all how, or some other cool um, ideas that I have uh, been doing with the same, same printable. And then you also want to make sure that you go around the edges. And because this is stress, distress stain, you're going to have to seal it. I mean, you probably should anyway, especially if you're going to be using it as an art journal because there's no telling what you're going to use in your art journal. So you do whoop, front and back covers. That is mostly dry. I did front and back. So the next step would be to take some things, your favorite medium. All right, we're going to use this. <laughs> so all you need to do is, whoops. Get a brush that you don't mind if it gets nasty. It's really not a fancy brush, it just it is what it is. All right, now I'm gonna start with the liner pages because um, sometimes I'm not real patient and I flip it over and, and then do the front side and then the, it ends up getting stuck somehow. I don't know, just I'm not real patient. So what you wanna do is you just wanna coat the one side Okay, nice even coat, and then you want to put a bunch more on there. You need to get pretty close to the edges. You want an even layer mostly. And then you can just stick your liner page on there. And what I like to do first before I go ahead and put a coat on top is to take a card or something and really push it down on in there. And if it's coming up somewhere, that means there wasn't enough goop there. This will help eliminate any um, air bubbles too. air bubbles. All right, and then, let me get my sleeve out of the way, then you put a coat on top. And you want to cover the entire thing. You know, too, if you wanted some, like, texture, I've done this before, too, where I've just taken my card and spread it out like this with my card. I don't know, it kind of gives it a cool feel, too, when it's finished. Okay, it's, it's covered. Okay, so we're going to set this one aside and do the other one. Okay, they're mostly dry. They're probably still a little sticky. And here's where I get in trouble. Because I go ahead and flip them over and work on the back side. 
All right, so same thing, same process. You just cover the whole entire thing to seal it and to seal the, um, the uh, Distress ink on there. I want to show you something. <laughs> this is an inkjet printout, which means if it gets wet, the ink will mess up. Um, it was sitting over here after I cut it out. And hey, beautiful, right? Well, I set my baby wipe on it. And look what happened. Can you see that? So if you have a laser copy, um, it won't do that. But that's what happened. But you know what? It kind of adds to the charm, doesn't it? I think. What the heck? All right, I'm gonna let that dry for a second. I'm gonna stick this one over here. If this hasn't dried out already. All right, they're almost, almost dry. They're, they're pretty close. Yeah, see, it's still kind of sticky. But like I said, I'm not very patient, so moving on. All right, so the next step is to get your template, your cover templates back out, place them on top, place it on top of your, of your cover here. And I use my crocodile for this when I'm, when I'm binding books this way. I use the little small hoe, the, um, uh, what is that, an eighth of an inch, I'm not sure, eighth of an inch, yeah. And I'm just going to line it up, poke through both. You can also use a really sharp pokey tool or an awl or something and poke through there. Either way, this is just my favorite way of doing it. Okay, so now all three, see how it's still tacky? All three of those holes are poked. Can you see it? There. And then I'm going to get the back template and I'm going to make sure it's laying properly because this is the back side. So I want to make sure that the hose are punched on this side. I'm going to lay that down on top of the cover here. And I'm going to poke a hole. You know, it's good to have templates sometimes. That way you don't have to measure. Every time you want to go make a book, you just grab your templates and, and go with it. Doesn't get much easier than that. All right, so now both of our front and back covers have holes in them, so it'll be like this. Yay. Okay. I'm going to let them dry a little bit more, and we're going to work on the pages now. The pages that are in my original art journal, those are mixed media paper. This stuff. But I also wanted to point out that you could use watercolor paper, you could use sketch paper, you could just use plain copy paper. You can do anything you want. It's your art journal. Um, anything that's big enough that you can fold it in half and stitch into this particular book because we're doing the Coptic stitch will work. If you just wanted a writing journal, you know, just use copy paper. Or if you find, if you have some really nice um, stationary type paper, parchment paper, any of that will work. Newsprint. Any artistic media, of course, will work. So I'm going to use the mixed media paper again because I'm, like I said, I'm making this book, this art journal with the mixed media paper in it. Whoops. With just plain mixed media paper. So I'm going to use, since the size of this book, I'm going to use the, the pad that is 11 by 14 inches because I know my pages are approximately 7 inches long and I know are tall and I know my pages are approximately nine inches wide opened up and when you fold them in half they're four and a half. I am going to make this journal, uh, let's see how many pages should we do? Let's do five sheets. Let's No, let's do it even because I know with this size paper I can get two sets of pages I guess. I'll just have to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to pull out, let's do four. So I've got four sheets of 11 by 14 inch mixed media paper. All right, now I need to get my big paper trimmer back out. So on the 14 inch side, you can also too use your template. 
Um, there's a reason why I did it this way, this page template. Um, I'll share that with you in a little while. But you can also, you know, just lay this. See, this is what I'm talking about. There's going to be one set of pages here and then one set of pages here. So that's how that works. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to cut this down to seven inches. And then this piece should be pretty darn close to seven. If not, I'll just shave a hair off of it. Just a hair. Yep. And then what you want to do is you want to turn it. And since I know that my pages are four and a half, but opened up, they're nine inches, I'm going to trim this down to nine inches. So that's what you have left over um, for this. You get two of these per you know, per sheet. So let me know if you could think of anything fun to do with those. And we'll cut the other one down to nine inches. So then you can either score it in half or fold it in half. I'm going to bump it up to this. Well, you know, with mixed media paper, actually, with mixed media paper, you probably want to score it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all these to this right size and then get this out of the way. Um, and score it then. Okay, so I got them all cut down to seven inches tall by nine, or seven inches tall by nine inches wide. And then here's all the leftovers. So yeah, I think of something we can do with these. I mean, obviously we can make tags, you know, my favorite thing. So since this is mixed media paper and it's super thick, just like watercolor paper would be super thick, and some, some heavy cardstocks would be too thick to just fold over because they would crack. So what we're just going to do is we're going to got my Martha Stewart scoreboard out and I'm just going to use a bone folder and I'm going to score every one of them at four and a half. All right, now I'm going to flip them over and fold them over using that edge there and giving them a little burnish. So so now we have them all scored and folded and so then the next step is to take your page template and hold it up there with the pages you just created and uh, cut the, the corners off. Um, you can also poke the hole, um, which I'm not going to do right now because my hole punch is broken. Okay, they're all, all the corners are done. Um, I didn't poke the hose again, like I said. This would be the time to do that. Now it's time to uh, poke the hose for the Coptic stitch. So if you notice on your page template, there are three white dots. That's where you're gonna poke your hose. So what you wanna do is you wanna turn it like this, stick it in the middle of your, of your page you just made, Use a pokey tool. I'm using a Tim Holtz pokey thing, pokey thingy with something on it. So anyway, so what you want to do is you, you have you have two choices really. You can find like a cushiony um, area and you can poke it that way, which is fine. That works. Let's see, it goes through both. That works just fine. Or you can lay it flat on your surface and line it up and poke that way. Depends on, I guess, your surface or what you like to do. And then there. See, all the, the holes are poked. So this way, now that you've got this template, you, all of your holes will be the exact same. You can even do two at a time. Matter of fact, I think you could probably do three at a time if you wanted to. Let's see if I got the strength. Yep, I sure did. All right, I just got two, and it goes really fast this way. When you have a template, you don't have to measure. You don't have to. You just you just have to lay it on inside, and then voila. All right, so all, those are all done. All eight pages are poked. <laughs> Um, again, I'll show you something cool to do with this a little bit later, but we're going to put it to the side right now. 
Okay, so here is the Coptic stitch. Now I have another um, video that I'll link to in the description. I'm using a curved needle. Makes life a lot easier when you're doing this stitch. You can do more holes. All right, so you start on the outside and you go in the bottom hole. And then you go all the way to the top hole. And then you lay it flat and you grab another one and stick it on top. And then you go into the top hole. And then, don't lose that tail over there, then you go into the center hole. If you go slow, your, your um, crochet thread won't get this tangled, but obviously I wasn't going slow because I got tangled. But if, you're, if you take a moment, it will come out, unless you've pulled really tight. There we go. <laughs> okay. So you pull it through the center hole, and then you want to pick the whole thing up and flip it over so that the, the, the um, page that you start it with is on top. And then you want to go through that center hole, and you want to go on one side of the string, pull it, and then go back through except on the top side of the string. So it's, it's trapped. This string here is trapped in that loop there. Okay. So then you pull it out and then you want to flip it back over to where that first page is now on the bottom. And then you want to go in through the second page center hole and then go through the bottom. Okay, so now it looks like this. So what you want to do is you want to take a minute to pull tight, pull in the same direction as the spine. If you pull up or backwards, you're liable to rip um, straight through that spine there, so you don't really want to do that. So you just keep pulling a little bit at a time until all the strings are nice and taut there. Now, I will say you don't want to go too tight um, with this because you want to have a little wiggle room when you're working in your journal. So you don't want to make it super tight. So then you, I just tie um, a regular knot. I do it two or three times. That's it. And then I do cut off my tail. I left too much of a tail, but that's okay. And I do take a little bit of glue. I'm going to use the glue and seal, Ranger glue and seal that I have in this, this bottle here. There you go. And I'm just going to do the knot there so that it'll stay, stay taut. The knot will stay taut. <laughs> God. Uh, I've been cooped up too much. All right, so then you want to take your third one. So the next, the, all the rest of them are going to be different than that first two pages. So then you want to take your third one, put it on top, go through the bottom hole there, go through the center hole, Oops. and then there, here's where the curved needle comes in handy. You kind of want to hold it, you know, the string with your thumb a little bit. So you don't lose the, the tautness, <laughs> my new word, taut. And then you want to take the needle and you want to go through in between the middle hole, the, the, the first page and the second page. You want to go up underneath that stitch and pull it through. Before, you want to make sure you've got at least a little bit of tightness in there, not too much. And then you want to pull it tight so it looks like that. And then I always go through that second and third page two, just to give it a little extra strength for when I'm working in my art journal. Then you want to go back in that center hole there, so now you're on the inside, and go out through the top hole. Oops. See, if I would just slow down, I probably got way too much thread. 
There's an easy way to measure it out, but guess what? I never do that. It's not hard to add, add anything to it, so it's, I don't ever measure. All right, so you're out the top. So same thing, you wanna hold it with your thumb there and you wanna go up underneath that string between the first and second page with your needle and pull it tight. I'm gonna give myself a little more room. And then you wanna go between that second and third page and pull it tight. So now we've got three pages that are attached together. See, that's not hard. All right, I'll show you one more and then I will either fast forward or do it off camera, one of the two. So you take another page, put it on top. This time you're gonna go in the top hole. Ouch. Yeah, try not to poke yourself. I do that quite often. And then you wanna go in the middle hole. You want to pull it taut, <laughs> taut, and then you want to go in between the second and third uh, string in the center there. Go in between there, or underneath there. Pull it tight and then go between the third and fourth page. Pull it tight and then go back in that center hole and then back out the bottom. Oops. And then you wanna go underneath, in between the second and third page string there, in between the two things under the string, in between the two spines underneath the string. Does that make sense? I hope so. You want to pull a little, little, little taut, not too taut, and then you want to go between the third and fourth and pull it taut. So see now there, it's it's loose, it's a little loose, which what you want, especially for an art journal. You may want to make it tighter if you're doing like a journal journal, like a, a writing journal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add the other half of the pages, and I'll be back. Alrighty, I got all the pages sewed together, and it didn't take me very long, but I did want to point out something um, that I did, the boo-boo that I made. While I was sewing it together, this very last page, I pulled too tight. Okay, can you see right here where I pulled too tight and it ripped it a little bit? I don't know if you can see, okay, I think you can. Um, it ripped it back just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm not selling this, so I'm totally fine with it. It's an art journal, it's something I handmade. I'm not really worried about it. It can, anything like that can be fixed, so don't stress about stuff like that. All right, so I still have my string on here and my needle on here, and that since this is the front, it looks like, I'm gonna grab my, oh, see, I'm just not very patient. Nothing happened, it just got stuck. All right, I'm gonna grab my front cover here and I'm gonna hold it up on here. And all I'm gonna do to attach this cover is to take my needle, go in that bottom hole like that, pull it, don't go too tight. And then I'm gonna go up underneath between the first and second page right there and under that string, pull it. It's easier to keep it flat and do it. I don't know why I feel like I gotta hold it up in the air when I'm filming. Pull it and then do it again. You can do this, like if like right now it's it's not wanting to go. It's a little little snug. So just open it up. Stick the needle through like that and then work it out to the side there. Now you don't want to get it too tight, remember, because you want to have room for, for your dimension. Do the same thing. Go in between that first and second page underneath that string. Pull it tight. So you can do this two times, you can do it three times, you can do it however many times you want to. I'm going to do two. 
So now what you want to do is you want to get between in that first page, in the center of that first page, take your needle, go through that hole in the first page there, and you're coming out um, in the first page. And then you want to go down to the center hole. Remember this is the one I messed up. And then you want to do the same thing. Go through the hole. Well, and try not to tangle your string. And go in between the first and second page under that string there. Pull it. Go in the hole again. Between that first and second underneath that string. Pull it. Then get between that first page there and go back in the hole of that first page. Come out in the center and go to the top. And go back through the hole, the top of the cover hole there. Go underneath that string in between the first and second page. Pull. Yep, see how sometimes they sometimes it'll go, sometimes it won't. So just you can work it through like that. In between the first and second, and release that string. Pull it. Now you've got a couple choices here. You can go back in that top hoe in the first page and tie a knot uh, and cut it, and then flip the whole book over and um, tie back onto the spine and add. The, the cover or what I like to do is go all the way down the spine in between the pages and just like you were attaching you know the cover and just do that in between each one and it, it just adds bulk wow you probably can't even see it <laughs> plus it's less cuts oh. Hang on, I'm going to have to re-thread my needle here. Okay. So I'm just going in between each page there, underneath the string. I think it looks nicer. I think it's a little stronger, especially for art journals. Um, I think it'll help. Oh, I've lost where's where I'm at. Where am I? Let's just pick one. Like I said, I, I normally have this laying flat, so I don't have as much trouble. Hang on, let me do it again. All right, now I'm on the last one, so I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, so now that we're on the back, we get the back cover, and do, the exact same thing. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna scoot in. Okay, maybe you'll be able to see if I'm, you're a little closer. So, put the back cover down. It's already got its hole. We're gonna go through the hole. And then we're gonna go in between, see how it starts to curl? It's probably too long. In between that first page and that second page, underneath that string, pull a little tight, not too tight. Then we're gonna go back in that hole. You can do this as many times as you like. But keep in mind, every time you go around that string there, it's gonna make it thicker and thicker and thicker. So then you wanna get between that page in, in the middle of that first page there. Go back in the top hole. I'm barely gonna have enough string. It looks like. Whoops! Got out of out of the camera view. Go into the hole there. And I, I promise you, once you start doing this, uh, you will really get the hang of it, and it'll go really, really fast. 
and you'll probably do the Coptic stitch for everything from here on. <laughs> it's that easy and that fun. Well, for me it is. I say it's fun. Not everybody thinks it's fun, I guess. Now we're coming down to, out of the bottom hole here. Go in the hole. I'm going to barely just have enough in between the two pages. Go back in the hole. In between the two pages. And look, I, uh oh. I swear. Let's re thread it again. I'm going to have to cut some off. I don't usually do that that often. So you went around. I'm going to go around one more time in between those two pages under that string. Alright, <clears throat> and to tie it off, you can either tie it off on the outside, but I like to go on the inside. Go back in that hole. And then go up underneath both of those strings there. I was about ready to do it again. And then make a knot. Oh, I did it anyway. Make a knot on that hole right there. And my string broke, but that's okay. Then I'm going to put a little glue dot just to keep it from coming undone. Not a glue dot, a dot of glue. Sometimes too, when I'm finished, I'll even run glue along the edges so that um, it stays good. Let me scooch back out again. Whoop too far. Okay. So yeah, now it's all done. And you can wiggle it around like that so that way you can make sure, see how much room is in between there? It's awesome. So now you can start creating. That's it. That's all you had to do to make this book. Just a few simple steps. Woohoohoo!